silver hit 50 in 1980, it hit 50 in 2011, and it's sitting at 22. Uh, it's a byproduct metal. You know, it's not something you can turn on the the spigot and whenever you want. So silver, I think, gets a little crazy at some point. The most important thing to realize is that is that the the powers that be have you playing dizzy bat. That's what Americans do. Uh, that, that that's part of what's wrong with us. Okay, so so this is what's happening. Interest uh, inflation is going to be transitory. Oh, okay. Wait a minute. Inflation is not going to be transitory. Oh, wait a minute. It is going to be transitory again. Okay, but don't worry. We have it under control. Interest rates are going to go up. They're going to go down. They're going to go sideways. Wait a minute. Real interest rates are negative. Well, what are real interest rates? I don't know. They said it doesn't matter. I mean, you see every single day, you've got a new series of, of narratives coming out that it's very, very confusing. And crypto, okay, now forget about like Bitcoin, Ethereum, the major coins, which have kind of different purposes, but you have 10,000 tiny crypto coins which basically means you have a national sweepstakes where everybody's going in and it's like with scratch off tickets at the gas station. Everybody's going in and saying, well, which is the next coin that's going to go crazy? Is it pizza coin? I don't know. It might be pizza coin. It might be token. Uh, what is it going to be? Well, I'm going to go after it. It's a penny. It might go to a dollar. You know, If it goes to a dollar, then I'll be really rich. But it doesn't go to a dollar. It goes to a tenth of a penny. And then you trade out of it. Dog coin is on Saturday Night Live at 70 cents. And now it's 17 cents, but mm -hmm. well, maybe it'll come back, but it's probably not going to come back. You're right. distracted. You see, this is a huge distraction. And then taxes are going to go up. Maybe only for the rich. Okay, well, maybe not for me, but I hope to be rich one day, but I, I don't want to pay any taxes when I'm rich. It, it's a huge distraction. And then you got virus stuff and booster shots and right. other variants and more booster shots and spike proteins and 75 different you know, times the way the variant can get you that the other one can't get you. And it's, this is a time when the, your job is to not be confused. Okay. Like, like, look, take a minute, turn off the media, turn off the TV, not don't turn this interview off, but turn off the <laughs> other interviews and, 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 and take a deep breath and say, what is going on here? Okay. okay. What do I own? And then ask yourself, what do I want to own if I want to own it for a year or two? Like what are the big trends that are happening? Okay, right. the metaverse is a big trend that's happening. Yeah. Okay, but 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 this is an emerging trend. Okay, uh, the blockchain economy is an emerging trend. The blockchain economy doesn't have anything to do with pizza coin. All right, so if you have pizza coin and you think it's going to be part of the blockchain economy, I'm not going to tell you that you're wrong, but I'm going to say the odds are probably against you. Okay, so so look at the energy transition. How much copper is needed for the energy transition? You're going to need to find a gigantic copper mine every year or two for the next two decades. Are you going to be able to do that? Probably not. So what's going to happen to the price of copper? Probably going to go higher. What do I want to own? Mining stocks? Maybe. Royalty stocks? Yes, that's what I want to own. And how am I going to sleep when I own those royalty stocks? Great, because I don't care what happens in the short run. I don't care about the day-to-day -day what the Fed says. Is the Fed going to do this? Are they going to taper? Are they not going to taper? How much are they going to taper? Are they going to raise rates? They're not going to raise rates? Look, David, this is what people don't understand. Interest rates are deeply negative, deeply negative. And they Real say, well, rates. EB, yeah, they say, EB, you're wrong. The interest rate is 1% on the 10-year. Okay, yes, but the inflation rate is, I say, 9%. The government says, you know, 6 or 7 Okay, that, let's take the government's figure just to be fair. That means that that six or seven percent interest uh, inflation rate, one percent interest rate. You're going backwards by five percent. Do you see this? So why would the yeah. government want you to go backwards? I'll, it's very simple. Because if you can keep real interest rates negative, you are eroding the value of the debt. Do you see this? So like, if interest rates are one percent and inflation is six or seven percent, then every single year the pile of debt is five percent cheaper to pay off. And nobody understands this. They say, well, this is too confusing for me. I'm just going to stay on Reddit and buy more stocks that sound interesting. Okay, and I'm going to become rich one day. Right. But the reality is, is that you go to work and you save money and you're trying to have a better life. And then the money that you save is losing value by 5 or 6% a year. And that's the conservative estimate. The real inflation rate is probably 9 or 10. And so you have 9, 10% inflation, 1% interest rates. You're going backwards by 9% a year. And that's what people cannot understand. And, and they don't even want to think about it. Okay. They just say, well, I'll just speculate. You see how everyone's a speculator. It, everyone is a speculator. I mean, I'm telling you, I've been going to Christmas parties, okay? And I go to the Christmas party. What have you been up to? Ah, oh, I've been trading stocks. 
everybody's trading stocks. What are you trading? Oh, you know, this and that, all this stuff. And it's down right now, but it'll come back. And everybody is a speculator. And so next year, I expect this speculation runs out of gas. There's no more stimulus check coming, okay? There's no more liquidity coming into the average person's pocket. They got a raise this year, but everything they're buying is going up in price. Sales are slowing down. You know, the refinance boom is slowing down. Everybody got their rocket mortgage, sucked the money out of their house, went on a trip, bought a bunch of toys and plastic and stuff they don't need. And now this is all slowing down. And so as this slows down and people see the stock market is grinding sideways, it's not doing anything. It's up 300, down 400, up 250, down 100. It's not doing anything. There's rotation going on. The big stocks are, are getting less appealing and the small growth stocks are starting to become more appealing because people are finding fundamental growth and they're buying that. Whereas for 10 years, it's been buy the gigantic tech companies and call it a day. That's over. It's finished. Yeah. So next year, you're, you're going to see a rotation out of that. And then you're going to see a move to something real. And people are going to say, what does it even mean, something that's real, something that's tangible, something that, that someone else's effort to produce this? I mean, imagine when you own a royalty, you have 20 or 30 years of production of, of an actual hard commodity that you drop on your foot and it hurts, okay? And somebody else pays to bring that out of the ground. Where do you think prices are going? Much higher. So the operating cost of okay. these mines is going much higher. Silver hit 50 in 1980. It hit 50 in 2011, and it's sitting at 22. Uh, it's a byproduct metal. You know, it's not something you can turn on the, the spigot and whenever you want. So silver, I think, gets a little crazy at some point. Um, and I think you got to be careful how you play that. If you play it with, with short-term uh, trading instruments, you, you, you have a lot of pressure. You know, so how do you play it? Well, Metal has got you know, about a third of the company's royalties are silver related. So, I mean, that's how I've chosen to play it. You know, my stockbroker can send me you know, bears uh, you know, over, overnight post as much as he wants. And um, I feel great about the royalties that I own. So we, we go into this next year. I expect the overall markets to grind sideways, not really go anywhere, disappoint people. Uh, and, and I think that the, that the metals are going to shine because remember, there's people out there managing 10 billion and, and they're, they're sitting with negative real interest rates, churning markets, confusion every day, and they have investors to satisfy. And it's not, it doesn't take a whole lot for them to say, I need something stable. Yeah. And, um, when, when that happens, it's too late. I mean, that's only going to happen one time. So you, okay. you got to be ahead of that. Yeah. So, so look, I, this is one thing I want everybody to, to really understand is that my whole career, I've done the opposite of what the brokers have told me to do. They always say at the end of the year, hey, EB, you got all these gains over here. You got a couple stocks that are dogs. Sell the dogs and and take it against the gains. I don't do that. So I actually do the opposite. I, I investigate my dogs and I say, well, what happened in this business? I mean, is, is the, does the, did the business get worse? Okay, maybe I will sell it. But if the business stayed about the same and the stock got a little volatile and everybody's selling it for taxes, I'll buy it. And then wait and see in January, the stock comes out of the water like a beach ball that you held under the water comes flying out and then I'll sell it then. So I've done this many, many times. It's really fun to watch. It goes on until about the 22nd or 23rd of December. Everybody goes on holiday and nobody's trading and the market value, the the volume goes way down. And then all of a sudden, these stocks that were getting punished during tax loss selling start moving up into January. They start moving up again. And so when your broker tells you to do tax loss selling, I'm not telling you to don't do what he says, but just think about it. I mean, if the stock's getting punished, sometimes you come into January and all that punishment's done. I mean, everybody is tax loss selling. right. So you have something that's down a lot. You think twice about selling it, sell it in January. You know, I've done this years and years and years. It's a, it's, it's a lot of fun. And everybody looks in January and says, wow, why is that stock going up so much? Well, nobody's selling it anymore. And so if you do the opposite, you know, you're, you're on the other side of that. It's very fun. Interesting. Okay. Do you, do you actually save in taxes for the strategy? Well, the thing about it is, is that, is that you're going to pay taxes regardless, right? And so, and so you look at in the U.S., you know, my capital gains rate is 23.8%. You know, it's, it's 20% in the high income bracket, and then there's another 3.8%. So it's quite high. And everybody thinks that's a big deal. But if the stock that, like look at Metalla, for example, if your tax loss selling Metalla to save 23.8%, but the stock's down 25% because of tax loss selling, are you really saving any money? No. I mean, you're better off letting the stock come out of the water, selling it later. 
You know, that I mean, I, I'm not going to be selling my own stock during tax loss selling. But what I'm saying is, is that take that stock as an example. Are you saving any money if you're trying to save the 23% tax and the stock's down 25% during tax loss selling? Are you really saving? No, you're not. If that stock returns back to where it was before tax loss selling. But why, why would you pay capital gains if you're down? Well, because you have gains and then you have stocks that your broker looks in there. And he says, hey, you got 20 stocks. Three or four of them are down. Sell okay. those stocks, take it against your gains and neutralize neutralize the gains you have okay. in your pizza coin or whatever else it yeah, is. You're, you, you're assuming you, made you had money gains on. in something else. Yeah, all right, cool. Exactly. I mean, if you right. have all losses, then there's no point in tax loss. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. but typically this time of year, the broker says, hey, you did really well in this stock. Beginning of the year, we had this $50,000 gain. You got a couple stocks that are down. Why don't you just sell those, take the loss, put it against the, the gain? and then you'll lower your tax bill. But my point is, if the stock you're going to sell is already beat up because of tax loss selling, all you're doing is following the herd. I understand. So uh, where I've had good luck is do the opposite. Buy the stock that people are tax loss selling. Then come January, nobody's selling it anymore. Pops back up, and then you carry the gain into next year. You can Mm -hmm. deal with it later. I mean, it's really, it's it's kind of a bad idea to be doing what everyone is doing at the same time. You know, it's it, 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 it's like anything in life, right? If, if everybody's thinking the same thing, somebody's not thinking, you know, so so this is the time of year where, where you can take advantage of that. That's what okay. I've done for, for many years. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. Do you want to know one thing about crypto? I made over 3000% in profit in a few weeks. Fact is, the traditional financial system, the traditional money system makes you poor, not rich. If you want to earn 500,000, 1 million dollar, you have to wait until you're 50, 60, 70 in the traditional financial system and you probably will still be broke. And you will be old. This is not a sexy combination as you can imagine. But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where to invest? Where do you start? My name is Gunnar and I'm from Germany as you can hear and things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. The fact is, there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There are seven key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them. And if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example, one of the key points is your exchange. And one of the biggest are, for example, Binance and Coinbase. These are trusted and well-established exchanges. But, and this is a big but, you won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits are not traded on those kind of exchanges. They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages and much, much more. And there are also market makers and influencers. For example, Elon Musk, he is not a crypto guy. But the moment he recommended Dogecoin, it went through the roof. To the moon, so to say. But why did he recommend it? Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who and you have to react before he is reacting. This is really, really important. And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail, and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist, here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. So see you soon. Click on the link now. I'll see you there.